स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया solve a few problems based on the theory of residues and the argument principle that we discussed in this week the first problem is computing an integral we are going to do some calculus of real variables by using the uh, techniques that we have developed just now so the first problem is to compute the integral from 0 to 2 pi of d theta by a plus cos theta where a is greater than 1 so at first glance this is a simple calculus problem and may not be a simple calculus problem but at first glance this is a calculus problem and uh, the reason of uh, solving this problem in this problem session is not straight forward however let's reduce this integral to an integral on on the complex plane so to do that let's look at the unit circle let gamma of t be equal to e to the power i t for t in 0 to 2 pi and on the uh, unit circle if z is equal to say e to the power i theta then cos theta is equal to z plus z bar by 2 but we know that on the unit circle z bar is equal to 1 by z so i'll just write this as z plus 1 by z so the denominator the cos theta can be written as z plus 1 by z at when the right time comes we will go back to that and uh, now let's write down our integral it's 0 to 2 pi d theta by a plus cos theta this is equal to integral 0 to 2 pi let me just introduce an e to the power i theta on the numerator and the denominator and uh, this is going to be a plus half of e to the power i theta plus 1 by e to the power i theta which is z bar the whole divided by i'll take the i out and there is an e to the power i theta here so this is precisely rewriting by adding and uh, uh, um, multiplying and dividing certain terms the idea is to write this as maybe i should write that as well this is just the integral from 0 to 2 pi of gamma prime t dt by a plus half of gamma of t plus 1 by gamma of t times gamma of t and because of that we can write this as integral over gamma dz by a plus half of z plus 1 by z times z till now we have not done any major calculations we have just done some minor changes of variable change the integral into a integral along a curve in the complex plane now we have some really good tools with us to compute what happens to such integral so let me just write down what this integral is going to be this is basically the two will go up here let me put a 2 by i times the integral of z square plus 2 az uh plus 1 now let's focus on z square plus az plus 1 z square plus 2 az rather plus 1 this will have roots i'll just leave the checks to you at uh, minus of a plus or minus square root of A square minus one. These are going to be the roots, right? The twos will cancel off, and this is what it will be. Notice that minus of a uh, minus square root of a square minus one. This will not belong to the closure of the unit disk because a is greater than one. Minus a minus square root of a square minus one will be less than minus one. So the absolute value will be certainly greater than one. and uh, if you look at minus of a plus square root of a square minus 1 just say that 
leave it to you to check that this is going to be between minus 1 and 0. Simple uh, checks will tell you that this is what is going to happen. You know, if you go up and uh, look at the function 1 by z square plus 2az plus 1, this is a meromorphic function uh, with singularities at minus a plus square root of a square minus 1 and minus a minus square root of a square minus 1 and uh, the in, in c minus 0, right. And uh, by the residue theorem, what we will be able to conclude is that 1 by 2 pi i times the integral over gamma dz by z square plus 2az plus 1. If you look at this particular integral, this is going to be equal to w gamma of uh, what is the first point minus a minus square root of a square minus 1 times the residue uh, of f at the point minus a minus square root of a square minus 1 plus w gamma of minus a plus square root of a square minus 1 residue of the function f at minus of a plus square root of a square minus 1. We just noted that uh, the point minus a minus square root of a square minus 1 does not belong to d bar and therefore the, uh, the, the winding number is going to be 0 that is something which you should sit down and check and therefore the first term is going to vanish. So, this is just going to be equal to the winding number of uh, gamma around minus of a plus square root of a square minus 1 which is equal to 1. We have done the uh, uh, necessary prerequisites to conclude that this winding number is 1. Gamma remember is the unit circle and therefore this is going to be the residue of the function f and the point at which we are looking at the residue is exactly this. To compute the residue, let us consider the function 1 by z square plus 2az plus 1. By writing them as partial fractions, this is just going to be equal to 1 by uh, minus of a plus square root of a square minus 1 minus minus of a minus square root of a square minus 1 times 1 by z minus so this big bracket minus of a plus square root of a square minus 1 minus 1 by z minus uh, minus of a minus square root of a square minus 1. Right. So, now if you look at the residue of uh, this function, the residue of this function is going to be the residue of this function and notice that uh, the, the, the function given here is going to be a function holomorphic on uh, the unit disk because minus a minus square root of a square minus 1 is holomorphic on the unit disk and what contributes is exactly this. Therefore, this is equal to, let me just write down the expression here. This is minus of a minus this. So, this is going to be 1 by 2 times square root of a square minus 1 into 1 by z minus minus of a plus square root of a square minus 1 plus a function h of z which is holomorphic on the unit disk. We are not worried about it. There will be a power series expansion there. And therefore, hence the residue of 1 by z square plus 2az plus 1 at the point minus of a plus square root of a square minus 1. This is exactly going to be equal to the coefficient which is 1 by 2 times square root of a square minus 1. So, we now know that uh, if you look at this integral that is equal to 1 by uh, 2 times square root of a square minus 1. Right, that is precisely what we have computed. But then uh, what did we want to compute? We wanted to compute 2 by i times this. So, hence 2 by i times the integral over gamma dz by z square plus 2az plus 1 is equal to, well, we will multiply by 2, uh, 2 pi i and divide it. This is going to be 1 by 2 pi i times the integral of dz by uh, z square plus 2az plus 1 
which is now equal to 4 pi by this, this is going to be equal to 4 or rather pi by 2 pi by square root of a square minus 1. If you notice it is remarkable that uh, a purely uh, calculus problem was reduced to a problem on the complex plane and the theory of residues was used to compute the answer. Let us solve one more problem in, in a similar vein. Let us look at uh, uh, real integral which needs to be computed. So, we will compute the integral 0 to infinity of 1 by 1 plus x square the whole square dx. Again, at first sight this might not look like it has anything to do with uh, uh, residues and argument principles, but we will somehow bring in the story of residues into this picture again and we will we'll see how it works out. As is to be expected, uh, 0 to infinity of 1 by 1 plus x square the whole square dx, this is equal to half times the integral from minus infinity to infinity of 1 by 1 plus x square the whole square dx. Being an even function, this certainly holds and uh, which now is the limit as r goes to infinity of half of integral from minus r to r 1 by 1 plus x square the whole square dx. Let us now consider the function we consider uh, consider the function f of z to be 1 by 1 plus z square the whole square. Now, there is nothing surprising with the function, it is just the function from above that we are interested in and notice that this is just uh, z plus i the whole square into z minus i the whole square. z square plus 1 can be written as z plus i into z minus i and this is precisely what we are interested in. Right, and if you now draw the picture, the poles of this particular function are at i and at minus i. Let us consider the following curve that uh, I am going to draw from r to r minus r to r along the straight line in this direction and then go along the semicircle. So, consider the curve gamma to be the curve gamma minus r to r concatenated with gamma, um, let me call the curve C to be gamma, concaten gamma minus r to r concatenated with gamma, where gamma of t is just capital R e to the power i t for t from 0 to pi. So, notice that the curve is just whatever is being drawn in the green, so, going this way and then we are coming along this direction. That is precisely what our curve C is trying to do. And if you look at the integral of 1 by 1 plus z square the whole square dz over the curve C, again 1 by 2 pi i will come in here, this is just going to be equal to the winding number of this curve around the uh, point i i and the winding number of this curve around minus i is going to be 0, we will be able to conclude that this is equal to 1 times the residue of 1 by 1 plus z square the whole square at the point i. This is precisely what it is. Let us just quickly compute what the residue is, that is a very easy computation to do. So, 1 by 1 plus z square the whole square is actually 1 by 1, uh, let me see, z minus i the whole square into 1 by z plus i the whole square. Now, if you consider the power series expansion of uh, 1 by z plus i the whole square. So, suppose uh, 1 by z plus i the whole square is equal to some summation b n z minus i the whole square. This is a holomorphic function in a neighborhood of i. And therefore, this certainly makes uh, sense to write it like this. Then 
1 by z minus i v whole square is just going to be equal to or rather let me put it this way the Lorentz series expansion of 1 by z square the whole square is just going to be equal to b0 by z minus i the whole square plus b1 by z minus i plus a holomorphic function and therefore the residue is going to be equal residue of 1 by 1 plus z square the whole square at the point i is just going to be equal to b1 but we know what b1 is b1 is the coefficient appearing in the power series expansion of f around uh, i right and therefore power series expansion of what of this particular function and hence b1 is just going to be equal to d by dz of 1 by z plus i the whole square evaluated at z is equal to i. The power series expansion, the power series expansion is around i after all. If you sit down and do the computations, this is going to be equal to 1 by 4 i. We have, let me write down what we have 1 by 2 pi i times the integral of uh, c of 1 by 1 plus z square the whole square dz is equal to 1 by 4 i. That is good because this integral to the left, this is nothing but the integral of gamma from minus r to r of 1 by 1 plus z square the whole square dz plus 1 by 2 pi i times the integral gamma 1 plus z square 1 by 1 plus z square the whole square dz. The first thing to note is that this is again equal to 1 by 2 pi i times the integral from minus r to r 1 by 1 plus x square the whole square dx plus the same and it is the limit 2 pi i times the limit of the thing on the, the first term as r goes to infinity that we are interested in. Let us look at uh, the second term 1 by 2 pi i integral over gamma 1 by 1 plus z square the whole square dz. Suppose this is i then the absolute value of i is just going to be less than or equal to 2 pi r by 2 pi times so notice that uh, f of z is equal to 1 by 1 plus z square the whole square. Now, if you notice 1 plus z square absolute value of this is greater than uh, r square minus 1 by using the triangle inequality and therefore 1 by 1 plus z square whole square absolute value is going to be less than 1 by r square minus 1 the whole square which is r to the power 4 minus 2 r square plus 1. And therefore, if you impose this bound over there, absolute value of i is going to be less than or equal to 1 by the by dividing by r, we will be able to get r to the power 3 minus 2 times r plus 1 by r. And the limit as r goes to 0, this goes to 0. Or rather limit as r goes to infinity this goes to 0 and therefore the second term does not contribute anything. This term hence vanishes as the limit as r goes to 0 is taken. Therefore, what we have is the following. Hence taking the limit as r goes to infinity we have 1 by 2 pi i times the integral minus infinity to infinity of dx by 1 plus x square the whole square is equal to 1 by 4 i and hence what we get to conclude is that half of integral from minus infinity to infinity of dx by 1 plus x square the whole square this is equal to the i's will cancel off will the 2 will cancel off this is going to be equal to pi by 4. So, a seemingly difficult integral to compute uh, is being computed by using the uh, power of residues and uh, we get a conclude, uh, concrete answer. In fact, we can slightly modify this problem and uh, 
compute the integral when we have an e to the power ix for example lurking at the at the top from say minus infinity to infinity. If this is the problem, we have already done all that is needed to be done to uh, solve this as well because now what will happen is that again we have to just make the uh, premise perfect. So, this is the curve from minus r to r followed by the curve here. Again the points of interest to us will be i and minus i and therefore uh, if you look at e to the power i x by 1 plus x square the whole square rather if f of z is being taken to be equal to uh, e to the power i z by 1 plus z square the whole square this is going to be 1 by 1 minus or rather z minus i the whole square times uh, e to the power i z by z plus i the whole square and therefore the residue of f at the point uh, i is just going to be equal to d by dz of e to the power i z by z plus i the whole square evaluated at z is equal to i which I have done the computation already this is going to be equal to minus of i by 2. I have done the computations, you should sit down and uh, integrate and evaluate and see that this is exactly what we will be getting. So, the argument here uh, about why this is the residue is exactly the same as uh, earlier. It is going to be the second term in the power series expansion of e to the power i z by z plus i the whole square around uh, z is equal to i and that is computed by looking at this derivative evaluated at i by using our knowledge from power series. So, we have we have been using quite a lot of theory we have developed so far uh, to conclude this and now the limit as r goes to infinity of integral minus r to r. So, that is going to be uh, what we are interested in i x by 1 plus x square the whole square dx. This is what it is. This is going to be the integral uh, from this is going to be equal to 1 by 2 pi i is going to come in here 2 pi i times minus of i by 2 e and we get this is equal to pi by e. So, I have rushed through this particular problem to obtain a solution. However, the idea is that it can still be broken up into uh, these two curves with an e to the power i z featuring at the top and uh, the second term here that will converge to 0 as r goes to 0 as r goes to infinity in the exact same manner as it happened in the previous problem and the first term is what we are interested in that is going to be exactly equal to pi by e. Let me conclude this problem session by uh, an application of the Rochet's theorem along with many other things of course. Let me write down the problem and then we will see. Let omega be some open set which contains let which contains the unit disk. Let omega be an open set which contains the closure of the unit disk rather containing d bar. D bar is the closure of the unit disk. And let f uh, be holomorphic on omega. So, we take a function which is holomorphic on omega which satisfies the condition that f of absolute value of f of z is equal to 1 whenever absolute value of z is equal to 1. So, the unit circle is being preserved, unit circle is getting mapped to the unit circle. Then prove that, so f be a non constant, let me impose that extra condition. holomorphic function on omega. So, now the problem is to show that then the disk is contained in f of omega. Of course, if it was a constant holomorphic function this would not be true that is the reason why I had to impose the extra condition of non-constant. Okay, so, let us see a uh, solution. 
the solution is going to have uh, multiple observations. The first observation is that f should necessarily have a 0 in the unit disk. So, claim there exists z in d such that f of z is equal to 0. So, what will happen if that is not the case? If not, then g of z equal to 1 by f of z is holomorphic uh, on d, right? On in fact on d bar. So, let me say there exists this on d bar. We know what uh, f is on unit circle. So, we know that uh, f does not vanish there, but we can now say that it is holomorphic in a neighborhood of d bar. It is in uh, it is holomorphic in some u which is contained in which contains d bar. Now, by maximum principle by the maximum principle we have absolute value of f of z is less than or equal to 1 for all z in the unit disk because it is uh, less than or equal to 1 the absolute value is less than or equal to 1 on the unit circle everywhere in the interior the absolute value is less than or equal to 1. Now, let us look at g absolute value of g of z is equal to 1 whenever mod z is equal to 1. Yet again uh, we are using the fact that g of z is equal to 1 by f of z and mod f of z is equal to 1 whenever mod z is equal to 1. And by a very similar argument by a similar argument as above by using the maximum principle on g we have absolute value of g of z is less than or equal to 1 on d for all z in unit disk. But that implies that absolute value of f of z is greater than or equal to 1 on d because uh, f of z uh, is exactly equal to 1 by g of z or rather g of z is equal to 1 by f of z yeah both are true. And therefore, uh, we now have from star and star star let me call this star star and let us call this star we get to conclude that absolute value of f of z is equal to 1 on d in fact on d bar in particular on d. But what do we know about uh, a holomorphic function which is non-constant because it is a non-constant holomorphic function the image of f sorry image of d under f is going to be an open set by the open mapping theorem. f of d is open and hence absolute value of f of z is equal to 1 on d is a contradiction. Should uh, sit down and think about why it is a contradiction. If it is an open set it cannot be sitting inside the unit circle in R2 and therefore, so I will leave that to you and therefore, hence our assumption was wrong there exists uh, z in d such that f of z is equal to 0. So, what we have established is that there exists some z in d bar in fact, z in d we know that it is not going to be on the unit circle. So, there is a z in d such that f of z is equal to 0. So, we used the maximum principle and the open mapping theorem to conclude this. Of course, we still have not concluded that every w is going to be uh, in uh, the image. So, in particular let us pick now some w in the unit disk. Define g of z to be equal to g of w the constant function uh, on uh, omega right. In particular what do we know? We know that absolute value of g of z which is equal to w which is strictly less than 1 is less than the absolute value of f of z. We also know that f does not vanish on the unit uh, by the theorem. Maybe I should put a minus w, that is much better. Now, by Roche's theorem, f 
and f plus g have the same number of have zeros with equal multiplicity have the equal have equal number of zeros in d counted with multiplicity why is this the case what is the curve that we used from roche's theorem the curve here is the very very simple unit circle and because we have the unit circle uh, the uh, the interior of this unit circle is going to it's null homotopic in omega because the bar is contained in omega and d is going to be the interior of uh, our unit circle so the number of zeros in d counted with multiplicity of both f and f plus g are going to be the same we know that uh, uh, f vanishes on d by uh, our uh, previous claim claim was that there exists some z such that f of z is equal to 0 and hence by Roche hence there exists some z in d such that g of z is equal to 0 or rather f plus g of z is equal to 0. Roche's theorem said oh I, I think I made a mistake equal number of zeros counted ah, it is not correct uh, it is not wrong f and f plus g is what I have written. So, f plus g will turn out to be equal to 0. But what is f plus g of z? f plus g of z is just f of z plus g of z which is minus w which implies that f of z is equal to w and that tells us that because the choice of w was arbitrary in our unit circle d is contained in f of omega. And that is precisely what we were trying to prove. So, Roche's theorem along with uh, the maximum modulus principle and open mapping theorem is used to conclude that the unit disk is contained in the image.